Good morning. Welcome to worship as we come to worship our Lord and Savior together in this uh, fourth uh, Sunday of Advent. Uh, hard to believe that uh, Christmas Eve is already on Friday, Christmas Day on Saturday. Uh, we do have uh, our, uh, we have four worship services uh, this uh, Christmas Eve uh, starting at 1 p.m. going every two hours. So 1 p.m., 3, 5, and 7. The 1 and 3 o'clock service will be uh, kind of family oriented. The uh, 5 and 7 o'clock. Uh, will be a kind of traditional Christmas uh, with our choir uh, singing uh, with us and leading us in worship. So come and join us. Uh, we will be uh, Zooming, live streaming our services at uh, 3 p.m. and 5 p.m. And uh, so join us in person or online as we uh, come to worship at the birth uh, of our Savior this Christmas. Uh, in your pew, in your chair, you'll notice uh, we have our uh, connection cards back, as well as scribble cards and offering uh, cards. Uh, feel free uh, to uh, um, uh, let us know that you are here by filling out uh, one of those uh, connection cards. On the back of that card is a prayer request form as well. Uh, so feel free uh, to uh, fill that out and put it into uh, the offering plate uh, this day. Uh, we do uh, still have uh, ornaments uh, to uh, put up uh, on uh, your Christmas tree, a St. Philip 50th anniversary ornament. We do have them in the office. Uh, they are $10, so come and uh, grab one if you have not yet already. Uh, continuing to uh, put out uh, Christmas uh, cards, uh, so bring uh, your Christmas card or picture and post it on our uh, wall uh, there, and uh, we'll be able to greet others uh, through uh, those Christmas uh, greetings. Our uh, Sunday school uh, children have put together uh, bags of hope uh, for the homeless uh, through uh, their offering from the last uh, couple of weeks. Uh, and so I invite you to uh, grab a bag or two and uh, you can give it out to uh, any homeless that, that uh, you see uh, as, uh, as you kind of drive around or do uh, your Christmas shopping. Right after uh, this service, uh, we will have a uh, memory uh, tree uh, service uh, to uh, remember uh, those who uh, have uh, died who are not with us uh, this holiday season. So uh, feel free to uh, join us. We'll kind of gather uh, over by the office and go out to the memory tree outside and uh, put ornaments uh, in memory of those uh, who have gone before us. And then right after that, uh, I will begin at my Bible study, and Sunday school will start uh, for children at its normal time as well. That's all the announcements I have. I invite you to stand as you are able, greet those around you, introduce yourself, uh, share the peace of Christ.
invite you to face the back of the sanctuary at the baptismal font for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who alone does wonders, who lifts up the lowly, who fills the hungry with good things. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the tender mercy of our God. Take a moment for silent confession. God, for whom we wait in the presence of one another, we confess our sin before you. We fail in believing that your good news is for us. We falter in our call to tend your creation. We find our sense of self in material wealth. We fear those different from ourselves. We forget that we are your children and turn away from your love. Forgive us, blessed one, and assure us again of your saving grace. Amen. God in Christ Jesus has looked with favor upon you. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, your sins are forgiven. You are children of the Most High, inheritors of the eternal promise, and recipients of divine mercy. God strengthens you anew to follow the way of peace. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I invite you to face the front of the sanctuary as we begin with our lighting of the Advent wreath. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Christ is our light. By grace he came, in power he rose. We wait for Christ to come again. Wait for the Lord who stays. From Bethlehem shall come forth the one who sh will rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. He shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. They shall live secure for he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. God has helped us according to the promise God made. The Lord's mercy is for those who fear God from generation to generation.
Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. With your abundant grace and might, free us from the sin that binds us, that we may receive you in joy and serve you always. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for our readings. Our first reading is from Micah. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. Word of God, word of life. Our second reading is from Hebrews 10th chapter. Consequently, When Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sin sin offerings, you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, See, God, I have come to do your will, O God. In the scroll of the book it is written of me. When he said above, You have neither desired nor taken pleasure in sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and sin offerings. These are offered according to the law. Then he added, see, I have come to do your will. He abolishes the first in order to establish the second. And it is by God's will that we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Word of God, word of life. So when next he comes in glory and the world is wrapped in fear, he will shield us with his mercy and with words of love draw near. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. 
Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, a Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servants. Surely, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me. And holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud and the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He was filled, he has filled the hungry with good things and sent away the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. I invite the children forward for a children's conversation. <clears throat> Good morning. Welcome. <laughs> How are you boys and girls? Good. Do you think you are blessed by God? How are you blessed? How does God bless you? We have a home, we have family, we have food. Yeah, exactly. What are you going to say? home yeah yeah there are many things that god blesses us with huh yeah benji nature yeah that's a good one god blesses us with nature god blesses us with friends grace yeah exactly there are many things that god has given us many things that uh, god blesses us with well, what I'm going to talk a little bit uh, uh, in my sermon today is uh, the difference between uh, God blessing us with things and us being blessed. Now, it's just a little bit of a difference, but uh, the fact that uh, we are blessed because God has sent Jesus to us. We are blessed because God has sent Jesus to us. Now, that's nothing that we have done, nothing that we have earned, uh, even not even something that we have in our possession, but it's a way that God sees us, that God sees us as being pure and holy and perfect, all because of what God, Jesus has done for us. Because when we celebrate the birth of Jesus, we're celebrating the fact that Jesus has come to us to be our sacrifice. For even though we do wrong, uh, do you do wrong at home sometimes? Do you get punished for it? Yeah. Well, even though we do wrong to God, God doesn't punish us for it because Jesus has already been punished. So we celebrate uh, 
who Jesus is, who Jesus came to be, and what Jesus came to do for us when we celebrate Christmas. So as you celebrate the birth of Jesus, may you know that Jesus came for you, that Jesus came to bless you, to make you holy, all because God loves you. Will you pray with me? Dear God, we give you thanks for coming to us. Thank you for blessing us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. How many of you feel blessed? How many of you have felt that God has blessed you? There are many ways where we feel blessed. But what does that really mean? One way we could look at how we feel blessed is how the children shared with us. We're blessed to have a home, blessed to have a family, blessed to have a children or pets, blessed to have a job, blessed to be here. There are many things that we feel blessed by and blessed with, as we believe God has given us these blessings. But to truly look at and understand what it means to be blessed, sometimes it makes a difference to look at those things uh, of what it means to not be blessed. Are we saying that those who don't have good health or don't have a good job or have lost family, that they are not blessed? What does it mean to be blessed What does it mean to not be blessed? Well, sometimes we just have to go back to the dictionary, which does anyone have a real dictionary anymore? (laughs) Mostly online, but Oxford Dictionary defines blessed as made holy or consecrated. So really, to feel blessed or to be blessed with good health or home or wealth or family doesn't mean that we are made holy, but those are blessings that come from God that God has blessed us with. The Greek definition of the word blessed that comes from makarios and describes a believer as being in an inviolable position to receive God's provisions or God's favor, as being an extension of God's grace. So I believe that there is a difference between the Lord blessing us with things compared to us being blessed. And often we see uh, the things that we are being blessed with as uh, all positive things. So there is that difference of being blessed with something and being blessed, of just being blessed. So to look at this uh, and what this uh, difference is, uh, we're going to turn to our readings First one being from Micah, one of the minor prophets. As I've been sharing in my minor prophets class, the minor piece of the prophet doesn't have anything to do with the message, just the length of the book. Just that there's fewer chapters than like Isaiah or Daniel or Ezekiel which are more of the major prophets. They're just longer books. So the minor books, minor prophets are just shorter in length. So Micah receives the word of the Lord and prophesies to the people in the land of Judah 
especially to the people in Jerusalem. And God's message to the people was warnings of judgment and punishment for their sins of false worship and social injustice. These messages of judgment are mixed with messages of salvation, kind of doom and salvation back and forth. There's three different messages of salvation in the book of Micah. And we here in our first reading uh, is from uh, that uh, center, that central, uh, that second message. And so what we hear, he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they shall live secure. For now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. This is where we are hearing that uh, the uh, one who is to come, the one who is to reign, the son of God, will be from Bethlehem. So telling them that you are blessed because I will give you salvation. You, uh, will, uh, not, you will be judged, but you uh, will not uh, kind of be uh, desolate. You will not uh, be destroyed. They will have salvation. God has blessed these people uh, for whom uh, from with the king shall come. God is pouring out his grace upon them. Blessed are you, people of Bethlehem. Now we turn to our gospel reading, where we hear Elizabeth, uh, Mary's uh, cousin, explain, exclaim to Mary, blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Mary is greeting, or sorry, Elizabeth is greeting Mary, knowing all knowing that Mary is carrying baby Jesus, that Mary is carrying the Son of God. And Elizabeth is exclaiming that Mary is blessed, blessed by God. For Mary hasn't done anything. Mary has just found favor in God's eyes, in God's sight. And God has blessed Mary as she is the one carrying baby Jesus. Who then, uh, John the Baptist, who is in Elizabeth's womb, jumps for joy at the presence of Mary, the presence of Jesus. So Elizabeth is truly calling Mary blessed, holy, consecrated, for carrying the Son of God. So what is Mary's response? For that, let's watch. is 
Mary's response is to sing a song of praise, magnifying her soul. To sing, to worship and glorify God for what God has done for her, for blessing her and blessing all generations. So Mary is blessed by God. So what does this mean for us? As Mary is blessed by God, are we too blessed? For that, we turn to our reading in Hebrews, where we hear truly how we, as children of God, are blessed, are made holy by God. I'm going to read it one more time for us. Consequently, when Christ came into the world, he said, sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sin offerings, you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, see God, I have come to do your will, O God. When he said above, you have neither desired nor taken pleasure in sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and sin offerings. These are according, offered according to the law. So, so far, this is all of what the Jewish people have been doing of offering burnt offerings and sacrifices, which according to the law state that they must do to receive forgiveness from God, to be made into a right relationship with God. This is where it really changes and what Christ came and who Christ is. Then he added, see, I have come to do your will. He abolishes the first in order to establish the second. And it is by God's will that we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus once and for all. You we have been sanctified. We have been made holy. We have been consecrated. We have been put into a right relationship with God because of the sacrifice of Jesus, which could not have happened without the birth of Jesus, of God sending his son to be the word made flesh, to live among us, to come dwell among us. So God does bless each and every one of you, of us, through sending Jesus to us, through Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. So this is why we celebrate Christmas every year, so that we may know how we have been made holy how we have been blessed by the sacrifice of Jesus all through the birth of Christ. And two is the reason we no longer offer sacrifices to God because God doesn't see them as being pleasing. For Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice once and for all. So Christ came to be our sacrifice, 
to sanctify us, to make us holy, not through anything that we have done, but all because of what God has done for us. So it is through our faith that we are made holy, that we are blessed by God. So we truly are blessed. And God provides us with many blessings as well through that. But there's a much larger difference between being blessed and being blessed with. So may you know God's love for you. May you know the reason that Jesus came was to make you holy, to bless you. And as we sing in the doxology, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him. We praise God for all of God's blessings, which we eternally are grateful for all of the things that God has blessed us with. But may you be reminded that you are blessed just through your faith because of God's love for you. Thanks be to God. Amen. That boy child of Mary was born in a stable, a manger his cradle in Bethlehem. What shall we call him, child of the manger? What name is given in Bethlehem? That boy child of Mary was born in a stable, a manger his cradle. His name is Jesus, God ever with us, God given for us in Bethlehem. That boy child of Mary was born in a stable, a manger his cradle in Bethlehem. How can he save us? How can he help us? Born here Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. We believe in one God who is creator, maker of all we see and all we don't see, who is ruler of the universe, source of all creation. We believe in one God who is Jesus Christ, God from God, light from light, true God and true human 
He is one with the Creator, the Word made flesh, our Messiah, Savior of all creation. We believe in one God, who is Holy Spirit, breath of God moving among us, who is one with the Creator, one with Christ, our Comforter and our Guide, Mentor of all creation. In this season of watching and waiting, let us pray for all people and places that yearn for God's presence. Nurturing God, you give us life and care for our every need. Use the church's gifts and ministries for your service, bringing your word to all who seek your transforming grace. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Creator God, you proclaim your boundless love for all that you have made. Renew barren lands, polluted waters, and melting ice caps. Make us servants of your creation that brings forth abundant life. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Righteous God, you bring down the mighty and lift up the lowly. Strengthen those who seek justice. Bless the work of community organizers, activists, journalists, and all who call our attention to imbalances of power. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Compassionate God, you proclaim your love and mercy. Show your loving kindness to teen parents and those who are pregnant. Comfort any struggling with infertility and those who await test results, are in treatment and hospice care, and others in need. Especially we pray for Ed, Jack, Diane, Paul, Laura, and her family on the death of her mother, and all that we pray for. Hear us, O God. <laughs> Gracious God, you fill the hungry with good things. Bless the feeding ministries of this congregation and community. Guide us to share your bounty with those who hunger or live in poverty. Hear us, O oh God. Hear your us. mercy is great. Faithful God, you stir up the hearts of those who love you. We give you thanks for those who, like Mary, were courageous in their witness. Give us such courage until that day when you fulfill all things. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of new life, you come among us in the places we least expect. Receive these prayers and those of our hearts in the name of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated as we receive our offering. You have the opportunity to give online or give in the offering plate to the back of the sanctuary. We thank you for your tithes, for your blessings.
of our waiting and watching, we offer the gifts of our hearts and our lives to the service of all your people. Prepare the way before us as we meet you in this simple meal, through Jesus Christ, our pathway and our peace. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all of the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Jesus, Jesus, Oh, what a wonderful child, Jesus, Jesus, so holy, meek and mild, new life, new hope, the child will bring, listen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In this bread and in this wine, Christ comes to us to bless us with his grace. Come, receive him. You may be seated. I invite uh, those who are going to be receiving communion at home and uh, those who are receiving communion in your chairs or your pews uh, to get out uh, your bread and wine or grape juice now. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Were closed. 
highest hope of our hopes bright dawning, Son beloved of heaven.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ that strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Comfort, comfort now my people. Tell of peace, so says our God. Comfort those who sit in darkness, mourning under sorrow's love. To God's people now proclaim that God's burden waits for them. Tell them that their war is over. God will reign in peace forever. <clears throat> Most High God. You have come among us at this table. By the Spirit's power, form us to be bearers of your word, sharing gifts of mercy and grace with all. Through Christ Jesus, our host and our guest. Amen. The God of hope, fill us with all joy and peace in believing so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit through Christ Jesus, for whom we wait. Amen. Amen. And 
wonders of his love, and wonders of his love, and wonders, wonders of his love. Go in peace. Christ is near. Thanks be to God.